Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Keso. In this video, I'll quickly be taking you through all the new features that were released in Java 18 a couple days ago. So this is a list of all the jabs that were added in this release. And in this video, I'll be going through all the jabs on the order of less relevant, less interesting to most relevant or most interesting. The first jab is 412, deprecate finalization for removal. Finalization was originally introduced in Java 1.0 to help avoid resource leaks. This happens by the garbage collector calling the public void finalize method in order to perform some cleanup. But this method has some critical fundamental flaws, so the finalize methods have been deprecated for removal. Then we have jab 416, re-implement core reflection with method handles. So in the JDK, there are originally three different mechanisms for reflective operations, but with this jab, they made method handles the underlying mechanism for reflection. So this will help the JDK developers reduce the amount of effort it takes to maintain and develop going forward. And then we have JAP 418, where they added a Internet Address Resolution SPI. SPI is a service provider interface. And in this JAP, they define an SPI for host name and address resolution. So normally the JDK uses the OS native resolver, but now the users are able to implement their own. And then JAP 419, the foreign function and memory API. This one might look familiar. That's because it's the second incubator for this API. The first one was last release. This API allows Java programs to interoperate with code and data outside of the Java runtime. It's a, a modern alternative to the JNI, the Java native interface. And in this new JAP, there are a couple updates to this API, which are listed on the slide here. JAP 417, the factor API. This is the third incubator for this API, and this API expresses vector computations. Yeah, there are two major updates to this vector API, which are listed here on the slide as well. And then JAP 420, pattern matching for switch. This is the second preview of pattern matching for switch, uh, which was introduced last Java release. So pattern matching basically allows us to express complex data-oriented queries in a concise and safe way when using the switch statements or the switch expressions. So what did they change this release? They now made it a compile time error in a switch block when it is dominated by an earlier label in that switch block. So you can see an example on the slide here. So basically when you have a case for char sequence and a case for string, this statement is unreachable because a string already is a char sequence. And now this will turn into a compile time error. The other update for pattern matching for switch is that there is a more precise exhaustiveness check when using sealed classes and generics. So you may need to add a default class to make sure your switch statements is still exhaustive. And then there's JAP 400, UTF-8 by default. So UTF-8 is a encoding standard. And with this JAP, it now specifies UTF-8 as the default char set. So APIs that depend on the default char set will now behave consistent across all implementations and all operating systems, etc. So if you want to keep the old behavior, you can still use the flag dfile.encoding is compat for compatible, or you could always just pass a specific char set you want to use to the relevant APIs. In JAP 413, they added code snippets in the Java docs. So they introduced a special add snippet tag for Java docs to include source code in your API documentation. You can see an example in the slide here. So I added some Java docs to this method. And then with the add snippet tag, I spe specify a code example here. And then in the generated Java docs, you can see that the code snippet is down here with a copy button. Good to know here is that the snippet tag is indentation sensitive. So you can add indentation here with the longer snippet with the if else statement or whatever. And it will also show up in the code block here, which is nice. And then you can also refer to external files for the code snippets and use styles. And the last JAP this release is JAP 408, a simple web server. So this JAP added a CLI tool to start a minimal web server that serves static files. Uh, this is useful for testing, prototyping, or educational purposes. And you can add some custom behavior to this web server by using one of the new classes, simple file server, HTTP handlers, and request. So to use the web server, you can use the command jwebserver to start the server. And there are some optional tags like uh, dash p to specify the port number. The default one is 8000 and dash d to specify the directory. And the default is the current one. Okay, these are all the new features in Java 18. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.